Hey everybody, it's Andrew Martin coming to you with a new video on June 10th. Happy June 10th. It's another sunny, beautiful day here in Seattle, hence the, the strange pattern on my face as the sun streams through the blinds, which I guess I could shut the blinds if I wanted to, but I have all my plants here and I don't want to deprive them from their morning sun, so we'll just have to bear with the, the mysterious pattern on my face. Um, I hope that wherever you are in the world that you're happy and that you're healthy, um, that life is treating you well. Um, I don't know about you, um, but I am really, really ready for Mercury to go direct. Um, I am not normally one to get all worked up and freaked out about, ah, Mercury's going retrograde, you know, the sky is falling, because really, you know, calm down. There, you know, certainly there are some things that are sort of par for the course when Mercury goes retrograde, but it's, you know, girl, it's just like a phase like anything else. You know, everything is a state. Sometimes, you know, life is di more difficult than others. Sometimes we're happier than others. Sometimes it's, you know, whatever, more frustrating, more mysterious, more enigmatic, more joyful, more easy. There's more of a flow, but we get to decide really ultimately what our experience is. And, you know, Mercury in retrograde is just another phase of the planets like the moon or Jupiter or Saturn or, or whatever. However, having said that, I will say that this Mercury <laughs> retrograde for me Woo, I've been kind of going through it emotionally. This has been quite a wild ride, um, and it's been a very illuminating. Um, you know, it's definitely felt like a freaking homework assignment. I mean, this one <laughs> has not been one that I personally have been able to just sort of skate through. Um, you know, there's been a lot of work for me, which I always welcome. You know, because the work is important, and on the other side of the work always lies something better and and more satisfying, and more valuable more illuminating, um, or at least the quality of life seems to always shift in a new in a new direction, which kind of brings me to the topic of today's today's video. This video is all about doing the spiritual work, doing the personal work that is required for us to get to the life that we dream of. And uh, I'm here to break it to you, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but girl, there is no silver bullet. There is no magic pill. There is no shortcut. There is no free pass. There is no free ride. <laughs> There's no get out of jail free card. You know, it's it's required for all of us, you know, on the other side of the work that we have to do in this life to focus on ourselves internally and to unravel the knots and to unload the baggage and to sort through and sift through, you know, what is what is ours? What do we really truly believe in? What do we expect from life and from ourselves? You know, what are our, ex our expectations? And our beliefs, it's up to us to decide what is true and what is not. You know, of course, there will be helpers along the way, mentors and teachers and guides. But ultimately, we're the ones that have to walk the path and we're the ones that have to do the work. And trust me, if there was a way out of it or a way around of it, I would have found it by now. When I tell you that I have tried just about every single thing to try to remedy the pain or the discomfort or the frustration or the emptiness or the whatever negative emotion that I didn't want to deal with. I've tried everything to avoid having to really deal with it and none of it works. So I'm here to save you some time to let you know that the sooner you begin to unravel and focus on the things that are coming up, um, asking for your attention and your acknowledgement and your love and your compassion and your understanding, the sooner you start to do that work, the sooner life will begin to reorient itself towards something that you really want and what you really desire. And, you know, we oftentimes wake up at some point in our lives going, wait a minute, this isn't what I signed on for. <clears throat> How did I get here? Whose life is this? This isn't what I want. I, you know, I never dreamed as a little kid that my life would be this way. You know, we don't sit, I don't think any of us really sit as a little kid dreaming about our life going, Oh, I can't wait until the day when I'm frustrated and miserable and dissatisfied and angry. That's going to be so awesome. Uh, no. So the work is something that we have to do. And I talked about this. If you haven't watched my Living in the Void video, I would recommend that you do because I, I kind of speak about this, um, you know, and the analogy that I use is, you know, when we have a plot of land and we want to create a beautiful garden or an oasis or a paradise or, or whatever, and the, the plot of land is full of shit, junked out cars, rusted out stuff, old dead brambles and trees and branches and, you know, garbage and trash and clutter. And there's no way that this, this lot can ever be the vision that we, you know, we have in our heads of this beautiful oasis. 
without clearing it out, without doing the work. And certainly we can call others to help us and certainly we can call others to assist us. But ultimately, we're the ones that have to decide, like, this do, is this my vision? No. So at that point, if it's not my vision, then I have to begin to kind of remove and edit and, and release and let go of all the things that don't serve my vision. And that's the work that we have to do in our own lives when we are confronted with things. And here's the other thing. There is no ending. There is no end. You know, it's a constant process of evolution. As we climb the ladder in our lives and our spiritual experience, inevitably the rung that we're reaching for will become the rung that we stand on. But we're always climbing the ladder. Our experience is always expanding and growing and moving in a new direction. And so, yes, there will always be a new rung to reach for, but trust that at some point it will become the rung that you're standing on and the level that you're aspiring to, to reach will at some point become the foundation on which you stand. So it's understanding that certainly we can have goals and we can have dreams and we can have things we want to accomplish. And those are important as signposts on the journey, but the journey never stops. And when we, because the whole point of source is expansion, we live as a uh, physical embodiment of source because source wants to experience itself as us. Source is only interested in expansion. That's it. That's pretty much, you know, bottom line. So, so our experience as a living, you know, breathing human, you know, individuated aspect of source is so that source can experience itself as us. And so there is no ending. So understanding that the journey is, you know, is the point and that <clears throat> certainly there are destinations that will achieve a certain level of satisfaction or happiness, but the destination is not the reason for the happiness. The happiness is the reason for the destination. Let me repeat that. The destination, the relationship, the job, the money, the accomplishment, the achievement, that is not the reason you are happy those things come into your life as a byproduct of your happiness. When we are aligned, when we have done the work to create the void, when we have cleared out all the clutter and the noise and are able to finally clue in and tune into what it is that we want as the, the essence of our lives and what our truth is in any given moment, because that's the other thing is our truth may change and what we aspire to will always change. But when we live a life aligned to that truth and to that desire, whatever it is, and we begin to embody that as a way of living and as a way of being and the essence of who we are, then everything outside of us sort of rearranges itself and begins to magnetize itself to us. So the destination is not why we are happy. We are happy and that's what allows us to reach the destination. When I first started doing this work, I would get a lot of people, you know, th there are basically for love, money, career and relationships. Those are usually the four things that all of us want to know about when we're seeking out help or guidance from, you know, from someone. Um, and when I first started doing this work, I was getting a lot of, of clients who were coming to me with questions like, you know, is my boyfriend cheating on me? Where's my million dollar check? Where's my dream job? You know, and these are all very valid questions. I'm certainly not trying to discount the importance of, of you know, the questions and, and people's desire to feel happy and feel secure and feel confident in this idea that somehow these answers are going to bring them a level of satisfaction or relief or happiness. I understand that. But when I started down this path, my point and my intention was to empower people to make change. My point was to give people the tools that I had had gathered over my journey and my personal suffering and my challenges and frustration and seeking and internal work and all of that, you know, <clears throat> certainly there were people that helped me on the path, but ultimately I had to do the work. And my goal was to be one of those people for others. When people needed help or guidance or insight or a light to help them, you know, find the path, that's what I wanted to be. And my ultimate goal was to get to the point where my clients didn't need me. I didn't want to be a spiritual Pez dispenser. You know, I don't want to be the aspirin that gets rid of your headache. I want to be, I want to help you find the cure for your headache so you never have to take an aspirin again. That was my thing. And it's still my guiding principle. And people would come to me all the time and, you know, want to know about what is my boyfriend cheating on me. And I could, you know, I could certainly give them some insight perhaps as to why their boyfriend was cheating on them or if their boyfriend was cheating on them. But my question and the information that I would get was more along the lines of, let's talk about why you're with someone you think is cheating on you. 
And that's not what people wanted to hear. A lot of people really all they wanted was someone to give them an excuse to get out of doing the work. And when people would come to me for these very, you know, uh, like I would just a certain level of information and a certain level of guidance, the information that I was receiving through my intention, because my intention was to help people transform their lives, right, to transform where they are into a more satisfying, more aligned version of what they wanted. And so the information, that, that was my intention. And so the information I was receiving for people was transformative. And a lot of people didn't want that. A lot of people didn't want to transform. And I understand why. Because transformation is by definition destructive. The art and the act and the, the you know, the action behind transforming anything is it's destructive. You know, if you want to bake a cake, you got to break some eggs, you know, you got to mix up all of this stuff and destroy the purity of what it is or destroy the, you know, the flour is no longer just flour. The eggs are no longer just eggs. The sugar is no longer just sugar. It all gets mixed up and messed around and then shoved into an oven at 400 degrees and it is turned into something else. When you're painting a picture, you know, this beautiful, pristine canvas that is, you know, perfectly flawless and, and a void of, of, you know, of purity, it's got to be fucked up. You can't create a painting without destroying the perfect, pristine surface. And so transformation by nature is destructive. And that's what so many people are afraid of is the letting go of the life that they have the letting go of the dream that they thought they wanted, the letting go of, of what has come to them and what they have participated in creating and accepting responsibility for the fact that, wow, I thought I wanted this, but now I don't. Or what I wanted is not really even close to this or it's kind of close, but not really. So I have to do some more work internally and, and do some more work inside of myself to really out picture, to see the vision, to watch the movie of what my internal desires are because the light of source, and I've used this analogy before, the light of source is the projector. And it is always only ever shining through our film strip. And our film strip is our expectations, our beliefs, our thoughts, ideas, our desires, our level of, of awareness, or you know what we think we're worthy or, or worthy of or what life is going to bring us. And then the movie is the outpicturing of that film strip. So light, the source, the light of source of our soul, of our spirit, is always ever only going to shine through us. And the movie that we're watching is based upon what we believe and what we expect. So if you want to change the movie, you got to change the film strip. And that's where your work comes in. So when I first started doing this work, I would oftentimes not have successful readings because people were coming to me wanting to know why is my boyfriend or is my boyfriend cheating on me? And I would say, well, you know, maybe yes or no, but aren't you more interested in wanting to know why you're with someone that's cheating on you? And they would inevitably, you know, hang up the phone or end the call or whatever. And so I thought for a long time, wow, I must be just a really shitty psychic. I must not be very good at this. But it wasn't that. It was, you know, what is that quote? If you, you know, judge a fish by its ability to ride a bicycle, it will think it's a really shitty fish or something. I'm paraphrasing really poorly. But it's that same thing. Me judging myself by the perceptions of others and what they wanted from me that initially wasn't necessarily in line with my intention and what I wanted to do would have been a really easy way for me to, and again, it's that living in the void. Just because the clients that I wanted and the type of work that I wanted wasn't there didn't mean that I couldn't have it, didn't mean that they didn't exist. It just took deliberate, focused effort on my part to realign myself and to really tune into my gifts, to learn how to use them. And to stay consistent in my vision and in my idea of the work that I wanted to end up doing someday. And inevitably it started to happen. So I'll give you an example. The work is so important and you can't escape the work. I had a client that I started working with. He's one of my oldest clients. I've been working with him the longest. And initially when he came to me, I, this was at the time when I was doing email readings and people would email me a question and I would just email my response. Ultimately, those ended up not being very, um, very powerful because so much of what I do is about a conversation and an exchange of energy and ideas. But I used to do email readings and he, this dude emailed me, you know, sort of in crisis about a relationship. I won't go into too much detail. I, I want to, you know, protect him. But basically there was a woman that he was, you know, really fixated on 
<clears throat> that she had, you know, the keys to his happiness, that basically the, the key to his happiness was in her hands or he wasn't going to be happy until he was in a relationship with her or until they were together. And every time he would email me, and this went on for about a year and a half to two years, every like three to six months, he would email me with the same question about this girl. And every time my response would be some variation of, you got to go inside, you got to do the work. This woman is not the key to your happiness. She, this relationship does not hold your happiness in its hands because in our lives, if something can be taken from us, ultimately it's not ours. Power, truth, integrity, strength, light, happiness, joy, ease, satisfaction, abundance, those things can never be taken from us. They are internal states. So if you are perceiving that something outside of you holds the keys to your happiness, it is by definition not real. In the end, it is an illusion. And if it can be taken from you, then let it be taken from you. If someone can, if you're in a relationship with someone and they can be taken from you, let them be taken because it means that it is not aligned with you and it is not your truth and it is not your true power. The relationship that we seek is not the cause of happiness. The happiness that we develop and align with internally is the cause for the relationship. And I tried in every way, shape or form to get this message across to him. And every six months, he would email me again, and he never really wanted to hear it, or he would say thank you, or he would say, oh gosh, okay, that's not really what I wanted to hear, but he would, you know, inevitably, every, you know, the, the clock would come around again, and he would email me again with the same questions. Finally, a couple weeks ago, we had a e uh, Skype session, because, you know, I hadn't heard from him in about nine months, and in that time, I had stopped doing my email readings and was only doing either phone or Skype or in-person sessions. And so he contacted me on Skype and we had the same conversation and it was the same thing. And finally, I just had to kind of bring out the velvet hammer is what I call it and give him some tough love and say, dude, look, you're never going to be happy if you are insisting that your happiness lies in somebody else's hands. I mean, it's that Madonna song. <laughs> happiness lies in your own hands. It took me much too long to understand. Thank you, Madonna, for the lyric. It's true. And I and he was like, well, what am I supposed to do? Summer's coming and I want to sit in the park with this girl and I want to have fun in the park and have a good time. What am I supposed to do? Sit alone by myself? Yes, you are. If that is what is required for you to get to the point where your work is the most important thing, then that is what you need to do. At some point, we have to decide that our discomfort and our fear of transformation is less powerful than our desire to make lasting change. At some point, your desire to have a different life and a different experience has got to be strong enough that you're willing to do the work. And until that happens, you're not gonna do the work. And I get it. I am the last person to judge anyone for wanting to resist or avoid or not do the work. I mean, who wants to step outside of the comfort zone? It's comfortable. It's the comfort zone for a reason because it feels comfortable. Whether or not it is good for us is another question. But it's, if it's what we know, it's what we go back to. You know, people, you know, it's the same thing if, to use an extreme example. When you see someone who's got a history of abusive relationships and they continue to attract these yahoos that are abusive and we say, well, why would you do that? Why would you willingly be with someone? Why would you sign up for that experience? It's because it's what you know. And even if the comfort zone is not healthy, if it isn't good for us, if it isn't productive, if it isn't moving us in the direction of our dream life, it doesn't matter because it's what we know. And so often we default to the comfortable, familiar choices because we don't want to do the work. Because, you know, it is akin to, you know, transforming yourselves in life and, and, and making big changes. It's kind of like redesigning and, and refurbishing the sports car while it's on the track. It's no easy feat. Trust me, I understand. I know what it's like to be miserable. I know what it's like to be crying in the shower before work because you hate your job. I know what it's like to be drinking and drugging and, and fucking and avoiding and shopping and whatever else in your way to trying to find a way to kill the pain or to ease the pressure or to unload the burden of the life that you don't want. I know what it's like to dread and live in fear of what life is going to bring you next because it feels like it just keeps getting shittier and shittier and shittier. And it feels like it gets darker and darker and darker and less and less promising and more and more desolate. Trust me, I have been there. 
And it was only through my insistence to hang on to what I knew and what I was comfortable with and what was familiar, even though it was fucking painful. It was only through my own insistence to continue to do that, that things finally got bad enough and I was miserable enough and I was lost and desperate enough that I finally threw up my hands and said, enough is enough. Fine. I will completely transform my life because nothing, as scary as transformation feels, and, and, and I think it's going to be, nothing can be worse than the pain I am feeling internally. And nothing outside of me is going to make a difference until I do the work inside. And the minute that I made that commitment to myself, the minute that I decided to start doing the work internally that was necessary, even though I didn't even know what it looked like, that's the other thing is I had to completely surrender. I had to say, okay, I know there's a plan for me that is more satisfying and more fulfilling than the version that I have. And I don't know what it looks like. And I don't know how I'm going to get there. And I have no idea what steps are going to be required for me along the way. But all I know is that it's got to be better than this. And certainly... There were times along the path that I wanted to give up. There were plenty of times that I was like, oh, Jesus, I'm just going to give all this up, close down the website, throw all my crystals and rocks in a box, get rid of all these hippy-dippy, airy-fairy, new age books, and I'm going to go work at the Gap because I don't care. Not hating on the Gap. I'm just using that as an example because I used to work at the Gap. My point is, is there certainly will be times when even once you've committed to doing the work and you want to give up and you'll want to stop, but what's the alternative? Going back to the shitty, empty life that you hated, that you were miserable within. And I'm not saying that the work won't be difficult. The path of the heart is often difficult, but the path of the heart is the path of the greatest reward. And whatever it is that you're avoiding doing, whatever it is that you're afraid to do, whatever it is that you don't want to face, that's where the, the work lies. That's where the truth lies. That's where the valuable aspects of yourself that you have been avoiding, that's where they are. And like that field, like clearing out the, you know, the plot of land from all the shit, at some point it's going to go from 100% full of crap to 8 to 90 to 85 to 75 to 70 to 60. And at some point you're going to get to where there's really only like 10% crap and the rest is, wow, we can really start doing something here. Now we can begin to build the life that we dream of. Now we can begin to bring the vision of the oasis or the Garden of Eden or paradise or whatever it is that we want to fruition and bring it into reality. So at some point, trust me, there will be a shift and you will realize that there is more going right in your life than not. And that the work that you need to do is really like a small portion, whereas it used to be everything is work. <laughs> everything is up for reevaluation and, and transformation. And at some point that, you know, that, that percentage is going to shift and you'll get to the point where eh, now it's about, you know, five to 10% of my time is spent doing work and, and excavating and unraveling and loving and having compassion for and understanding and accepting and releasing and all of those things. But accepting and releasing and understanding and owning and taking responsibility for it is a hell of a lot easier and a hell of a lot more satisfying than drinking and drugging and fucking and shopping and spending and people pleasing and lying and yesing when we'd rather not and continuing to move forward in a life and denying the truth of who we are and what we really want. And you got to do the work. You got to do the work. So I told this dude, I finally was just like, stop, listen. This is the deal. You're at a point right now. You can either start to do the work that I've been telling you for the past two years it's time for you to do, or you can call me again in six months and spend another $100 for the same fucking conversation. How many times do we need to hear the message of truth before we start to listen? And that decision is entirely up to you. And the session ended with him actually being very grateful, even though he didn't want to hear what I had to say, even though he was not happy. And I told him, look, dude, if I had a magic pill that would give you a shortcut to doing the work, trust me, I would have it. I would have taken that pill long ago. I would have marketed that fucker, sell it to you for a thousand bucks, and I could retire a rich man today. Because if there was a magic pill, if there was a shortcut, if there was a get out of jail free card, I would have it. And I would share it with you because it would make me fucking a trillionaire. And I would never have to work another day in my life. But that is not the way it is. Life is not happening to you. It is responding to you. Life is the movie 
that is being projected through your expectations. And if you want a different movie, you got to change the film strip. And certainly there will be some pain and some tears and some confusion and some destruction. Certainly there will be people in your theater of your life who will go, I don't like this movie. I liked it better when Andrew said yes to me. I liked it better when Andrew put me as a first priority. I liked it better when Andrew said whatever it was that I wanted him to say. I don't like this new empowered, honest, loving, compassionate, powerful version of Andrew. So I'm getting up and leaving the theater. Bye, girl. See you later. Sorry you don't like the new movie, but this is how it is. This is my theater. This is my house. I get to decide the experience that I have. And certainly there will be things that come into my life that seem to be unexpected or that seem to be a challenge or a problem. But because I am in my power and have remembered who I am as a powerful being and I am willing to do the work and I know how to do it because I've made this work my life's practice, whatever comes to me, I can handle it. Whatever comes to me, I'm capable of dealing with it. And if I walk outside and get hit by a bus tomorrow, then game over. I'm back up in non-physical and let's have a party. Because all these things that I perceive as problems no longer matter because I'm done with this life. So if your life is shitty and if your life is unsatisfying and if your life is not a version that you feel like you signed up for, the question of what to do lies with you. And if that means that you reach out to someone like me and book a session so that we can give you some clarity and some tools and help you walk the path, then absolutely do it. If that means that you have to start being more honest with yourself in an attempt to learn what honesty feels like so that you can in turn be more honest with other people, that's what you got to do. If that means that you've got to make some uncomfortable decisions in your life and make some decisions that may seem totally fucking crazy, but for some reason you just know that that's what you got to do then that's what you got to do. And if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Life will continue. But sometimes we all have free will in this world. We can do and make the choices that we feel are the ones that we want to make in that moment. But sometimes life pushes you to a position where the choice is you can continue to be in pain. You can continue to be dissatisfied. You can continue to have a shitty version of this life or you can move in the direction of the unknown. You can trust your heart and your soul, and you can begin to listen to those little inner promptings and nudges that are saying, hey, what if you went over here? What if you did this? What if you loved yourself first? What if you started saying yes when you wanted to say yes and no when you wanted to start saying no? What if you started calling people on their bullshit? What if you start calling yourself on your bullshit? And while it may seem scary and it may seem unknown and it may seem completely antithetical to what you perceive the happiest version of your life to be, if you feel like you're being pushed or drawn or nudged or called in a certain direction, it's probably because you are. It's because your higher self, your guides, your angels, whatever you want to call them, your guardians, they have a bird's eye view of your life. They know what you want. They know what will fulfill you and make you happy and they know how to get you there. And sometimes the path is not super clear. Sometimes you don't get to see the plan all at once and you have to just play the, the deck of cards one card at a time and you don't get to see the next card until you play the one in front of you. Sometimes it requires a leap of faith of stepping into the void and into the shadow and saying, Jesus, Lord, help me. I don't know how it's gonna happen. I just have to trust that it will because what's the alternative? Staying put in this crappy life that's not satisfying? sitting with your pain one more damn day, pretending that it doesn't exist? No, ma'am. Not anymore. But you got to do the work. And you got to start somewhere. And start with the low-hanging fruit. If you're clearing out that field with all the shit so you can plant your dream garden, start with the easy stuff. Pick up some rocks. Pick up a few things. Pick up the empty box. You know, save the rusted, you know, beat-up old automobile or the gigantic fallen dead tree Save the heavy lifting, you know, stuff until you've, you know, you've worked up a sweat and you're warmed up and you're kind of, you know, moving into it. It doesn't have to happen overnight. And in fact, it won't happen overnight. Start where you are. Start with what you can. Start now. Just start. And I promise you, the minute that you begin to do the work necessary to achieve the, li the life that you dream of, all sorts of things will begin to align themselves to assist you. Because when we're moving towards our truth, that's when we can receive the help and the guidance. When we are moving towards truth, source, the light, truth, light, and source will assist us because it's about magnetizing. We come into this life from source, as source, 
to begin a journey back to source. But when we're moving away from the truth, when we're moving towards denial and anger and pain and, and you know, and judgment and, and, you know, sort of misalignment with the truth of who we are, they can't help us because why would source help us to walk a path away from ourselves? Our powers of creation are ours and we can do whatever we want with them. And if we want to create a really shitty fucking life, we can, but we won't have help doing it. When we begin to move towards the truth and to the ease and the flow and the relief and the satisfaction and the light, then they'll help us because absolutely it is our divine right to be happy in the end. But the work is our responsibility and we've always got to do our part and we've all, and always we can ask for help. Always we can ask for assistance and guidance. But once that guidance shows up and that assistance shows up, it's our responsibility to heed it and to take the action that is inspired by it. And we'll know, we'll know what to do. And if you don't know what to do, then, you know, call me and I'll help you. But you got to start somewhere and you got to be willing to do the work because what do you want to call me every three months asking the same damn question and getting the same damn answer? It's always going to be the same. What do you want to do and what are you willing to do to get it? And it all starts internal. So we don't have to like it. The work doesn't have to be fun. We can kick and scream and moan and bitch and drag our feet the whole way. Sure, go ahead. I do it all the time. <laughs> I do it all the time. What the fuck is this? This is what I have to do now? Now a warning, but <laughs> yeah, you kind of do. So do it. You know, there's nothing non-spiritual about being frustrated. There's nothing unspiritual about, you know, being nervous about doing the work that you got to do. But it's, you know, it's like ripping the band-aid. You just got to rip it off. Girl, you just got to do it. So you got to do the work. Nobody gets out of jail free. Nobody gets a free pass. <laughs> we all are here to co-create our life take responsibility for our creations and live the life that we've painted for ourselves. If you don't like the movie you're watching, girl, change the film strip. As always, I thank you for watching. Go to my website. Check me out there. If you want a session, you can book one with me there. Go to my Facebook page. Um, if you want to follow along the conversation and see these updates, um, my blog and my website, sometimes I have some issues up uploading video because of the, the server and they're having some issues. Um, so you may not always be able to see my videos, but you can see them on my YouTube channel. Um, or you can go to my, my Facebook page. I always post them there too. So get ready, get ready to do the work cause it's time. And if I can help, I will. So that's it. I love you. Thanks for watching. It'll get better. Trust me. It has to. Um, and until then, just love where you are, accept where you are, and trust that the work that you are afraid to do is the key to what you want. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Love you. Bye.